Adam Horney or Kevin Horney. I race Moto America Super Sport. I made a video explaining how I started racing and got into Moto America. Uh, and that was my 2023 season. And the 2024 season is now fully ended. And I raced in five of the Moto America Super Sport class uh, race weekends in 2024 on the Apex Manufacturing Triumph 765 Moto 2 Daytona with Apex and SWG Motorsports. And it was a blast. It was so much fun. Um, I had a ton of learning, ton of improvement, a ton of just crazy race weekends. It, it was insane. Uh, but I never broke down any of the race weekends independently. So I'm going to start doing that now. Road Atlanta was the first race weekend I raced. I'd been doing some club racing and testing before to get comfortable on the Triumph as it was new to me this season. Um, I'd been working with Taylor Knapp, who was my teammate going into Road Atlanta. And yeah, I had a lot of confidence. I was still really nervous because Road Atlanta was a new track to me. I had never ridden it or raced it. And the last time I tried to show up to a Moto America event, learn the track and qualify, it didn't work out. So I was nervous, but I, I also had a lot more confidence uh, in my riding and, and that I could do it. I'd been doing a lot of preparation, talking to Taylor, you know, studying all the track footage I could and just mentally preparing to learn the track and do it very fast. So with Moto America, the structure of the days is Thursday's move in. Friday is uh, practice, qualifying one. Saturday is qualifying two, race one. Sunday is warm up race two. My goal for every single Moto America event this year was just to qualify, make the show, and finish both races successfully because of how new I am. And with qualifying, there's technically three time sessions, practice, qualifying one, qualifying two. Usually they're just going to use qualifying one and qualifying two to give you your combined qualifying results and give you your grid position. Or for me, my concern was if I even qualified, which is essentially you have to be within 108% of the fastest time in all of the sessions, but usually just Q1, Q2. Practice is also time just in case there's an issue in qualifying one or qualifying two. They're each 30 minute sessions. So pretty much you got to learn it in 30 minutes and set down a pretty good time in Q1 and Q2. That's, that's the goal. You go as fast as you can in Q1 and Q2 to get the best grid result. So going into practice one, after the track walk on Thursday, the team got everything set up. They did an awesome job talking to Taylor, strategizing. We decided that I would follow him for a couple laps, and then I wanted to go learn the track on my own because personally I feel that once I have my lefts and rights down um, and I'm learning a track, I want to learn it for myself and not just be gauging what I'm doing off someone else the whole time because what am I going to do when they're not there, you know? So I want to learn my ride or like my mental track map to start with, uh, you know, and, and just get the baseline. And then from there, when there is someone faster or someone in front of me, it is really good to learn what they're doing and, and figure out how to go faster than them. Um, but follow Taylor. It was awesome. Fell in love with the track. We ended practice with uh, 30th place out of 38 bikes on the track at a 135.8, which isn't that fast, but I was happy with that result considering it was my first time on the track. We made some pretty big changes going into Q1. There's obviously a whole debriefing process of, of going through the data, you know, telling them what I'm feeling, where I'm feeling, what I like, what I don't like, you know, what I would want out of the bike, just doing track maps and preparing for the next session. So Q1 made some big changes. We finished 29th. I dropped a second to 134.8. I think we did a pit stop. It was, it was a good session, just figuring out what I could do differently on the racetrack, feeling what the changes are, feeling what I like, feeling what I don't like, what you know I think might be better or worse, and just trying to go faster. And I got some TV time getting passed by PJ Jacobson, and, and it was cool to learn from him for a couple turns while he was in front of me, so thanks, PJ. But it was a good session, got a good result, dropped some time, and then the debrief process again, figuring out what we can do. Going into Q2, we got 29th again at a 133.7, made some smaller changes, dropped another second, went back to the process, after that of debriefing and seeing what we could do to go faster. Nothing really major happened in Q2. Race one started 29th because combined qualifying, I got 29th and 29th, started 29th. It was an awesome race. I didn't have any major battles. Uh, it, it was just, you know, kind of right to business after we all got blocked up in the S's. There's a big separation. And then from there, it was just, uh, you know, picking away at everybody. I finished 20th, so I made nine positions up. I think there was a couple crashes, but I know I was passing some people. Uh, I did go off in the S's one time and they got a bad tank slapper and the bike was all over the place, but I recovered it, uh, thankfully. And yeah, I, I was really happy with that. I still am happy with that result. My first time there, I got 20th after starting 29th, you know, first race weekend on the Triumph. It was, it was sick. It was a blast. Um, 
But race two uh, was a little different. It was raining. So I only went out for a couple laps and warm up just to save the tires, which I probably shouldn't have done. I should have done the whole session. But um, yeah, started 29th, got 24th in the rain. I was pretty new to the rain at that time. Uh, first time in the rain on the Triumph. And yeah, just slowly but surely got better. Uh, every lap, I think I was I was dropping a good amount of time, but I did get lapped too. And then there was this patch uh, in my favorite section of the track, the turn one to turn five section. Turn four, I guess you would call it, the, the downhill right uh, right before you bottom out. There's this resurfacing patch that every time I went over, it, it, it was like my bike would just drop down it just a little bit. It was pretty scary, but it was fun. Either way, that favorite part of the track, one through five, that whole section, carrying all the speed up through turn one and the blind hill and then flicking the bike back and forth, driving down the hill, the G-forces at the bottom and then the little bump going into five. That was that was my favorite part. Turn seven was probably my biggest struggle, getting the good drive on the back straight. I just was having a hard time trusting the front on entry, but slowly it got better. Um, and that's going to be a point I work on next year when I, when I get back there. Overall, it was a great weekend, great way to start the uh, 2024 season. And, you know, it gave me a lot of confidence going into Barber. It, my main takeaway is that I could do it. You know, I could show up to the track, learn it, race successfully, have a good weekend. It was just really a, a confidence booster going into Barber and the rest of the season. So, yeah, I figured I'd, I'd just give like a breakdown of my thoughts of the race weekend now, uh, show you some videos too, and just go through this process for uh, the rest of the season. Let me know what you guys think and uh, what I could do better next time. And I'd like to thank, you know, obviously Apex Manufacturing, SWG Motorsports, Bison, Arai, Dunlop, The Wexer Group, um, Moto America, all you guys. Thank you for supporting me um, on my videos and stuff. So let me know what I can do better and have a great day.